A new study from the Journal of Immunology proves that the damage of a sleepless night is immediate. It creates an emergency response in the immune system, flooding the body with toxic inflammation. And that's just one night. This is not a future problem. If you're not sleeping, the fire is burning now. That all stops tonight. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Dan Monti. That scientific finding I just mentioned isn't theoretical to me. It's a clinical reality I see time and time again. So many of my patients come in with sleep habits that are completely chaotic, working from bed, screens on all night, no consistent schedule. Their habits are chaotic, so the solution had to be simple and structured. That's why my clinical prescription is not a hundred vague tips that are impossible to implement. It's a simple, non-negotiable protocol, three clear yeses and three absolute noes. Master these and you master your sleep. So the yes, no combination number one is food. So let's start with what you're putting into your body close to bedtime. What you eat and drink in the hours before bed can be either the most powerful sleeping pill or the most potent stimulant. The choice is yours. And it starts with our first clear yes and absolute no. The world of diet can feel overwhelming. So let's keep this simple. Eat lighter in the evening, and in general, try to have no food at least two hours before bed, unless medically advised otherwise. This one simple rule can make a huge difference. If you're somebody who craves that high caloric treat at night, it is likely because you are tired and you should go to bed. The body triggers that need for a blood sugar spike when you're forcing yourself to stay awake and watch the show. You should probably just record and watch it other time. But the diet itself throughout the day also can have a profound impact on the brain's sleep structure. Studies have shown that healthy whole food diets really make a difference. Another recent large scale study showed that higher intake of fruits and vegetables correlated with less disrupted nighttime sleep, basically a better night's sleep. Now, in my practice, when patients switched to the Mediterranean diet, I recommended, along with no food after 8 p.m., the change is immediate. Within a week, many tell me their bodies finally want to sleep again. Removing that late night snack gives your natural sleep drive room to come back. But many of my patients also really needed our next rule, which shifts the focus to what's going on outside the body. While the bedroom is meant to be a sanctuary for rest, for many people, it has become an enemy to sleep. So let's zero in on our second clear yes and absolute no. The biggest sleep killer signal is light, especially blue light from devices. Our bodies have an ancient operating system. Light means daytime, be awake. Dark means nighttime, go to sleep. Light is the most powerful signal for regulating our internal clock. But now, at 11 p.m., we hold a mini sun, our phones, tablets, computers, just inches from our eyes. The blue light from these screens is the most potent weapon for suppressing your brain's melatonin secretion. Research shows that even typical indoor room light can suppress melatonin production by about 50% and delay its release by about 90 minutes. Your ancient brain is completely confused. The second wrong signal is excessive heat. As your body prepares for sleep, its core temperature needs to drop naturally. If your room is too hot, it hinders this process. A 2025 review paper confirmed that high ambient temperatures are directly linked to reduced sleep duration and quality and can even increase the risk of sleep difficulties by over two times. Another wrong signal is noise. A quiet room is important. And if you live in an environment where there is outside noise out of your control, be proactive in blocking it as much as possible. Finally, there's the wrong signal of bad brain conditioning. If you're used to working, scrolling on your phone, reading anxiety-inducing news, watching horror films on TV that shouldn't be in your bedroom, or arguing with your partner in bed, your brain, through a process of conditioned learning, will start to associate the bed with wakefulness, stress, and anxiety, not the rest and peace you need. The bedroom goes from being a sanctuary to a battlefield. To correct this, we need to go on the offensive and send powerful 
it's time to sleep signals to your brain. This isn't just about what you do before bed, but how you manage your 24-hour biological rhythm. Remember, three key words, dark, cool, and quiet. Use blackout curtains or an eye mask to create an environment with almost no light. This protects your precious melatonin secretion. Then, stay cool. Set your room temperature between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I aim for 65. This helps your core body temperature drop smoothly, a key physiological signal to initiate sleep. And third, create quiet. Use earplugs or a white noise machine to block out sudden sleep disrupting noises. Some of these things might seem obvious, but it might surprise you to know the most important thing might happen during the day. As soon as you wake up in the morning, get exposure to bright natural light for at least 10 to 15 minutes. This morning light is like pressing the start button on your body's internal clock. It calibrates your circadian rhythm, making your body more alert and energetic during the day, while also making it more sensitive to the darkness signal for sleep at night. Mastering sleep begins the moment you wake up. So now we fixed your food and fixed your environment, but there's one final piece of the puzzle, your mind. Even in a perfect room with a perfect diet, you can still lie awake for hours. The battle for sleep is not won by force. It is won by strategy. So let's talk about the biggest strategic error you're making. This is our final yes-no combo. Having anxiety about sleep will assuredly be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Sleepless in Seattle? That's what you called him on the show because he can't sleep. The battle for sleep is never won by brute force. It's won by strategy. And the biggest strategic error is trying too hard or fighting to fall asleep. When you start worrying, I have to fall asleep, you activate your body's stress response system. Your brain goes into problem solving mode. Your heart rate increases, your muscles tense, all of which are the opposite of the sleep state. This is called sleep anxiety. The harder you try, the more awake you become. In the past, we thought this was just frustrating, but now we have startling new evidence. Recently, a major study published in the top journal Neurology found that older adults with chronic insomnia have a 40% higher risk of developing dementia or mild cognitive impairment compared to those without persistent sleep problems. This may be equivalent to an extra three and a half years of brain aging. So today, let's break the vicious cycle of worrying about sleep and then not being able to sleep and then worrying even more and not being able to sleep even more. There are simple techniques that absolutely work. The most effective thing I've seen in my practice is just two minutes of controlled breathing right before going to bed. Inhale on the count of four, hold it for the count of seven, and then breathe out the count of eight. Do it with me. So I'm gonna breathe out completely. And now I breathe in through my nose, I hold. And I breathe out. See my video on the 478 breathing? This fast, simple technique resets the nervous system, which is often needed after a long, stressful day. This is also great to do if you wake up in the middle of the night to gently get you back into sleep mode. Next is the 20 minute rule. If you've been lying in bed for more than 15 to 20 minutes and are still wide awake, get up. Go to another room and do something quiet, relaxing and screen free, like reading a pleasant book or poetry or listening to soft music. Do the breathing exercise again and only return to bed when you feel sleepy. The purpose of this is to break the negative association of bed equals wakefulness and frustration and retrain your brain to equate the bed with sleep. Finally, establish a pre-sleep wind down ritual. For 30 to 60 minutes before your intended bedtime, turn off all screens and give your brain the space to start separating from the outside world. This period gives your mind and body a clear signal. The day's battle is over and it's now time to enter a state of rest and repair. So to recap, let's sell the board and review our three big yeses and three big no's. 
food is a big important one. Alcohol, caffeine, later in the day, or really at all, is going to interfere with sleep, and we want to avoid that. Heavy late night meals, we want to have our food as early in the day as possible, especially that last meal, our environment. The room needs to be your sleep sanctuary or sleep cave. So you want to get rid of all that blue light and make sure that the room is cool enough. And in terms of our strategy of how do we fall asleep at night, don't struggle. That just creates more sleep anxiety. So today we've covered a lot of ground together. I hope this starts to connect the dots for you and make the world of restful sleep feel a lot less mysterious. And with that, this is House Call. I'm Dr. Monty. Until next time, live fully and sleep well. People on the crew write down questions as we're filming. So let's see what they came up with. My smartwatch tracks my sleep and gives me a sleep score every morning. Great. Is this technology helping my sleep anxiety or secretly making it worse? Actually, these wearable devices are very helpful for people and it gives them an idea of sometimes their sleepfulness and wakefulness. Oftentimes people are waking up in the middle of the night and walking around when they don't even know it. So overall, these things are helpful, but you know, don't let it stress you out if you're not getting quite as much sleep as you thought you were. It just means do some of the things we talked about. You say the damage from one bad night is immediate. So does that mean I, as the father of a newborn baby, am just in a permanent state of toxic inflammation? Well, that's one of the reasons we have children young. Um, you weather the storm of inflammation and some of these inconsistencies much better when you're younger. And so a 25 year old or a 30 year old who has some sleepless nights with their child, the effect is different than if you're 55 or 65. I've always heard a hot bath is great for sleep, but you say our core temperature needs to drop. Who should I believe? You or my grandma? Believe us both. Because that hot bath does have a relaxing effect. But then when you get into bed, you want the room to be nice and cool. 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Are you trying to turn my bedroom into a meat locker? What if my wife or kid likes it warmer? Well, again, it's personal preference. I aim for 65 degrees and I wouldn't store meat at 65 degrees. Serious question. My hubby snores like a train. Which of your three rules fix that? Because that seems like the real problem here. So snoring is a complex issue. It's a whole chapter in one of my books. One of the things you have to do is make sure that there's not a medical reason for the snoring, such as sleep apnea. But then we need to look at things like body weight. Is there an excessive amount? Also, is there any alcohol or things at night before bed that could be causing snoring? And even body position pillows and things like that. So snoring should be addressed. First and foremost, make sure there's not a medical issue. And then if there's not, there's lots of things you can do.